What is a Leviathan and is there a spirit of Leviathan? If you look around and listen to some preachers, you'll hear people saying or speaking about this spirit of Leviathan. What exactly is that? Is it biblical? Well, before we get to that, to the spirit of Leviathan, let's first deal with what is Leviathan. Now, the Bible does mention this creature, this sea creature, this sea monster called Leviathan. And according to the scriptures, this seems to be, not even seems to be, this actually is a creature that was created by God that dwells in the sea. We see this in Job 3. We see it in Job 41. As a matter of fact, let's go to Job 41 and read what he says about Leviathan. In Job 41, 1, he says, can you draw out the Leviathan with a fish hook or press down his tongue with a cord? Can you put a rope in his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he make many supplications to you or will he speak to you soft words? To continue, he also brings up this issue about these large behemoths, these large animals. But many people think that these, this is probably speaking of a dinosaur. And then this Leviathan, this large sea creature, doesn't say a lot about it. Now, the word does kind of re refer to a twisting or coiling. Some have even speculated that maybe he's speaking of these giant squids or octopuses. We just don't know. What we do know is that clearly this is an animal, a creature that was created by God. In Psalm 104, 24, beginning there, it says, O Lord, how many are your works? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. There is the sea, great and broad, in which are swarms without number, animals both small and great. There the ships move along, and Leviathan, which you have formed to sport in it. So what is he saying? There's this animal that is kind of in the sea. This is a, a great animal that he says you have formed to sport in. And so it kind of does its own thing, wreaks havoc on people as well as other animals, apparently. Again, we don't have a great description of what this animal is. We don't know what he, what he looks like, what he does. Just mentioning it in the scriptures, it's clear that God, one, formed him, two, People are leery of dealing with this animal. Obviously, this is a, one of the great sea creatures. Something else we don't know by the scriptures is, does this animal still exist? Probably not. Doesn't seem to be one. If so, we haven't discovered it. Now, we have seen large animals. That the largest that we do know of are certain types of whales, and we know of large squids, but not to the extent or the ferocity that seems to be mentioned in the Bible. However, there might be something that kind of makes a parallel between this animal and Satan. This is probably going to lead us to this issue of this spirit of Leviathan. But let's go to Isaiah 27, verse 1. In that day, the Lord will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent. Now, before I go forward, he's speaking about delivering Israel, about what Israel is going to, uh, how Israel is going to be delivered, freed, and so forth, and this new righteousness. And he's speaking prophetically what's going to happen in the future, and in doing so, he brings up Leviathan. He says that the Lord will punish Leviathan with his fierce and great and mighty sword. Even Leviathan, the twisted serpent, and there's where we get the term this, where it has, a, has this connotation of twisting or coiling because he's a twisted serpent. And he will kill the dragon who lives in the sea. Now, some people have kind of assumed or thought that maybe this is kind of a double meaning, meaning Satan, as well as this actual animal. Not quite sure. The Bible, again, doesn't give us a whole lot to go off of. We do know this. Uh, this issue of Israel having deliverance, that has begun, obviously, at the cross, which meant that this animal would have been destroyed or, or killed or dealt with then. But it can't have the same meaning or double meaning referring to Satan, at least in the same way, because obviously that dragon, that serpent has not been dealt with. That dragon has not been killed. Now, could it also mean prophetically in the future? It's possible. The only deal is we just don't have enough to go off of it, which brings us to this issue of a spirit of Leviathan. Similarly, there's also this spirit of Python that you hear oftentimes charismatic speaking of this. The problem is we don't have a scripture to go off of. And I want to caution anyone, if you're going to say something is, and you're going to want to use the Bible and say it's a spirit of this or that, and you don't have scriptures to back it up, then you don't have a basis to make that statement. Too often, people are going to say, and you're going to hear people going to say that I know this is true, I've dealt with it. Well, because you felt like it's true, because you say so, doesn't mean that it is so. According to the scriptures, which is what we ought to be living off of, if the Bible doesn't speak on this, 
then we shouldn't either. Meaning that, that doesn't mean that the Bible speaks on everything that's out there. The Bible doesn't speak about America. The Bible doesn't speak about cars. We know those are there. But in terms of our spiritual life, if this is something that is dangerous, that it affects our spiritual walk, so much so that people have written books and articles and made videos and preached on this, you would have thought that the Bible, at least with God's foresight and knowledge, would have spoken about it as well. There is no mention of this. There's no mention of a demonic spirit called the spirit of Leviathan, nor is there a mention of a demonic spirit called the spirit of Python. It just doesn't exist. And so if you are wanting to give it a name, why don't you? Why don't we just lean towards what the Bible says? Maybe there is no spirit of Leviathan. There certainly is no mention of it in the Bible. And so for us to make something out to be that's not there, I think would also be a travesty and do a disservice to those who want to read the Bible. If the Bible is not going to be the author of what you believe, if the Bible is not going to be the guide of what you believe, if the Bible is not going to be how you look at life, how you look at the world, if you don't look at the world through the, through the lenses of the Bible, then the question has got to be then, why do you have a Bible? Why would you read something that you're not going to follow? If it's supposed to be your guide, if it's supposed to be how we gain understanding, we're supposed to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord, and we get that through the scriptures, and you don't use that, you use something else to be your guide, well then why have the Bible? Why read it? And so, yes, it does mention Leviathan, but no, the Bible does not mention a spirit of Leviathan. And I would caution you to also look at the people who would even promote this, you may want to disregard them because what they're also doing, they are promoting a new authoritative source, not the Bible, but them or their own experiences. And so in all our getting, get understanding, we should be Bereans. We should go and search the scriptures. And if the Bible doesn't say so, well, then we don't need to say so. Amen.